All right, Titan Dynamics fans, what you got here is the fuselage for the Titan Dynamics Raven. And I'm almost done printing this thing out. I'm incredibly excited. I've got about six more wing parts and then uh, be able to glue everything together and start stuffing it with electronics. But what I want to show you is that this thing is not glued together. It is falling apart because I've got a little trick that I'm implementing. So I've got files on Thingiverse and I've got a second video that I'm going to show you in Fusion 360 how you can print some of these bigger parts on a smaller print bed and also by using these basically biscuit interconnects um, make the gluing process a little bit smoother and more confident especially if you don't have the steadiest hands here's what uh, Fuse Zero Two looks like, and I had to cut this down. So, anyways, just gonna walk through, and then um, probably do a rapid, <laughs> accelerated view on uh, gluing this all up. Here we go. So, first up, I'm gonna take the easy parts, get the whiskey out of the way. Um, first things first. With this technique, uh, you'll want to print out a bunch of these little biscuits. Um, you can use whatever material you'd like. I uh, would avoid using lightweight PLA, um, the standard version, not the pre-foam stuff, just because it's not quite as strong. Uh, definitely 100% infill. I did make these particular ones out of pre-foamed Polymaker lightweight PLA in the past, or actually on some of my... Uh, micro talons. I just used normal PLA that I had laying around. So first up, once you get your mating parts together, you want to take these biscuits, make sure that they fit well. Uh, one thing that I point out in my uh, tutorial for Fusion 360, you notice that I've got three of these in here. I'm trying to control the mating of these two adjacent parts and two axes. The reason is, is that for this particular vertical uh, biscuit, left to right, it's not moving, but it does wiggle up and down. Thankfully, with the fact that I've got this uh, other biscuit at 90 degrees or orthogonal, that's going to restrict that movement and give you a nice mating. Other thing that you want to do before you get the glue out, once you've inserted all three biscuits, do a dry fit and really look at making sure your seams come together. Sometimes these can be off a little bit. Um, it also is going to tell you how you need to manage the two parts while you're holding it together, waiting for that, uh, that super glue to cure. So, all right, let's get to gluing. Uh, what I like to do is glue the biscuits in on one side first let that cure a little bit um, probably go set up the biscuits on another part come back and then put glue inside each one of these uh, pockets and then along the perimeter here or sorry along the uh, the mating face and glue them together so that looks like this using medium ca that's what mo and noah recommend Probably need to get this out of the way, so I'll drip on it. Just a little bit, not too much. You don't want to cause overflow. Really the point here is just to allow those biscuits to get glued in. When they're in, try not to let them bias one way or the other. Keep them centered a little bit. Cool. All right, I'm going to set those parts aside. And uh, this is the one rare instance where I don't have any uh, orthogonal biscuits. So this is the, uh, the hatch on the Raven.
The other thing is you do want to make sure you press them in decently so that way they sit down inside. Uh, another reason that you want to dry fit all of these before you uh, actually get to gluing, last thing you want is one of these to end up being pretty proud and then you glue everything up, go to stick the parts together and end up with a giant gap. That would suck. Um, depending on the part, you could probably maybe fix it. Uh, most likely, if it's uh, screwed up bad enough with alignment, you'll end up having to report uh, at least two parts. So, okay. Coming back to uh, the part that I just glued up. So in this instance, I'm gonna glue the entire perimeter. Take care of those pockets real quick. Might have overdone it a little bit on that one side. So get these two vertical pieces lined up, get the horizontal together. Again, looking at the seam, how those two parts make together. See a little bit of an overflow, just wipe it with my finger. Usually you're supposed to use a cloth or some towel, otherwise that gets gunked up. And that's it. Okay, we'll set that aside. It just makes it so much easier. Don't have the steadiest hand, so. Okay, there we go. All right. Um, I'm gonna keep going on, finish up this fuse, and uh, I'll leave this recording. And of course, uh, put it in fast mode, because you guys don't want to play this back in real time.
All right, there you go, guys. Um, this was slightly off on this corner here, but I mean, ever so slightly. If I need to sand that down, it shouldn't be an issue. I hope this helps. Uh, I know there's been a lot of comments on the Facebook page asking for uh, guides and. Um, to help with the gluing process, but more importantly, uh, a lot of folks with some smaller printer beds. So go take a look at the second video. It's a bit long winded, it ended up being about uh, 20 minutes. I do apologize, but hopefully I'm thorough enough to make it easy for anybody to jump in, uh, modify the files that you bought from Titan Dynamics and uh, get your plane built. So take it easy everyone, cheers.